I've got my 1980 Corvette Stingray here, entered in a burnout competition at Leadfoot City. Just earlier this week, this car was left for dead in a vacant lot somewhere in Tennessee. I drug it down here to Florida, did get it running, and we just threw this blower on as well. I've got less than three hours to the start of the competition, and I've got a host of issues. Namely, the engine just jumps out of here. I mean, it's getting higher than Willie Nelson, so I gotta bring that thing down, get it strapped in or something. And there's a few other bugs to work out and maybe fix the brakes. Let's see if we can get it done. I just got to jump right in here and see if we can figure out a way to get this engine tied in. Basically, the very first test run I did, about three-quarter throttle, I looked out the hood and I could see the motor just jumping out of the bay. I actually felt the trans hit the tunnel. Um, I only got to make three minutes. So some ideas were thrown around as ratchet straps, chain, JB weld, bubble gum, do nothing. Someone mentioned just replacing the motor mounts. That doesn't seem like a good option. I just, I don't have enough time. And uh, I just want to get out there. So we're going to try to figure out a way to get this done. I do have some aircraft cable or some like uh, stainless steel cable. Let's see if I can get creative with that, maybe. Basically what I'm looking at here is your, your uh, it, motor mount has a C in shape to it and then there's a part that it slides over and there's a bolt that goes through it. Well the rubber, sometimes polyurethane on this part, has basically separated from its mount. So anytime you give the engine throttle it just lifts right out of the cradle. And I'm thinking about pulling this bolt out up here and just running this steel cable through that bolt provision and then just like wrap it around the steering stuff maybe around this thing and then get it really tight and just impact down a little clamp just enough to keep it from jumping out of the hood i really wouldn't care other than the blower pulley if you watched the previous video i think we determined it's three cow hairs from hitting the cross member and i really don't want to screw that up otherwise i just let it eat so i'm going to pop this bolt out and then see if i can get super creative with just like tying cable and i think we got big quarter inch stuff so that's going to be interesting as well this also is not working but it's plugged in nothing's burned i'm not sure what what's going on maybe it's because we're running 2000 horsepower it's just not wanting to read right that's probably it okay five eighths sure i might be able to slip that cable behind this mount and then come right through that bolt and then we'd be golden It'd just be a short loop. Trying to back the motor mount bolt out. People have such a fit if you call motors engines or engines motors, but they still call these motor mounts. I'm just saying. I don't know if this is doing anything, but my arms are moving, so I'll just keep going, I guess. There's definitely a violent amount of stuff falling in my face, and that does burn. I still haven't confirmed if this is making a difference in what we're trying to do here, but I'm just going to keep going. Oh, there. I think it is. Safety squints engaged. They just got to fight through it. I'm almost done. There we go. Oh, and the bolt's going to come right out for me even. Usually you gotta rock the engine and get about 37 splinters so deep that you can't remove them. But what I'm thinking is, can a guy just get it behind here like this? I, I did, which means I could. And then you just gotta confirm. Is that doing what I want it to do? I think so. Okay. And then go back through this way 
It's not wanting to do that. Stubborn little devil. Well, help me understand. I could pull a bolt through it. Just flustered. Those things are sharp. And I ain't kidding you. Look on the clutch. Yeah, I see the problem. Around this way, like this. Come back up here. <laughs> through here. Now we're getting somewhere. If only I had Captain America on this one and Johnny Bravo on this one, just <laughs> We are much weaker. <sighs> Great. What is this one though? Oh, that's that one. I'll be dipped. There are no leaks on this vehicle. We were terrified we were gonna come in this morning and it was gonna be 14 gallons of oil on the floor and just gas leaking everywhere. I didn't disconnect the battery. Figured it might burn down. There were just so many variables. Uh, I almost didn't come in today, to be honest, but no one called me late last night and said, hey, you ruined our entire facility. So I thought I'd at least come in and check things out. Can I get my impact in here? Is the other question I was gonna ask. So we think we got the engine mount situation figured out. And uh, we got her tied down back here. You don't want any loose stuff. And that runs up here, and then this big ratchet strap, oh yeah, I got a couple more out of it, runs behind the blower, down to the frame on the other side, and down to the frame on this side, and yeah, that's not going anywhere. Well, actually, this might. That was loose, but anyway. And then we got some aircraft cable on this end, and we torqued that, all the torques, so that should be fine. So now I think we'll move on to brakes. It'd be nice to have one front brake, maybe two, and then we'll maybe get the uh, rev limiter put in. Probably not, but we'll bleed these brakes real quick. Now the Air Booster 7000's hooked up. That's neat. And I just need to find some line. I don't want to get this nice floor dirty. And I'll hook the line onto the bleeder and run it down to an old Coke can or something. And that way when I crack the bleeder, John's gonna pump the brake for me because I don't want to get more ants on me yet. And we'll run some of this really bad, horribly looking brake fluid through and see if we get front brakes. Probably not. Oh yeah. So we had some juice leaking on the floor and I'm just confirming that the bolt that I threaded into the rear outlet of the brake proportioning valve isn't leaking and it's not. I didn't think it would hold, but I guess it is. We've got some Permatex Super Thread Locker 9000 XL or something in there. And that seems to be doing the trick. So, I think I probably have front brakes at this point. That's neat. Oh, that's really bending and doesn't look safe at all. That just means you gotta work faster. Guy wants to save these old paws, you know. Plus there's a good chance these will blow apart. And I wanna have fun, but I don't wanna wreck this fiberglass. I would just feel terrible. So, I have outside some Highway Max colored smoke tires all the way from Australia. And in fact, if you guys wanna try them out, there's a discount code down in the description. I don't make a penny off of it. I just got you guys a discount. You can order some up. They've got blue, red, yellow, green, multicolored, all different sizes of rims, 15, 16, 17, you name it. Have a little fun with them. I'll go get mine. I was originally gonna go with green, but just not patriotic enough. So I picked up some red. You can also do color conceal. So they cover this in black. You literally can't tell what color they are. You just have to look at the part number. But this is a 205-65-15. I wanted similar height, but I wanted them skinnier, you know, because we don't have horsepower. And these should be a little bit easier to spin, hopefully. Gotta have a center cap. And that looks ridiculous. Perfect. Wait a second. There's only four in a package. Come on, I guess we're running four lugs. Don't know what to tell you. That is not good. Oh my God, that's stupid. 
これ Try to pop this in crudely. That'll work. This is just a rev limiter. And the three wires I need, because I'm not doing output signals, go right here to the distributor. So it's really easy to plug and play on this. And then I could put, they call them pills, but basically you could set a chip in there that sets your rev limiter. So 5,000, 5,500, 6,000. And I'm going to put a 5,000 in here. It should be pretty easy to do. I'm just going to use the connectors that came in the kit. And away we go. These are actually for the independent Chevelle. So the back spacing is different than what I needed for the Corvette, but I didn't really think about it. And this comes with four wheel disc brakes. So what's happening is down here, the wheel is actually pinned against the caliper. So when we were testing the front brakes, the rears are actually dragging. So we're trying to track down some wheel spacers. I might have found some, or we're just going to find a bunch of miscellaneous washers and, and get it out that way. I only need about, I don't know, 5 16 something like that, just to get it off that caliper. And if all fails, I'll just tear the caliper off. There's a hard and a soft limiter, and I'm not a super wizard with these, but soft ones are more ideal, because in my opinion, what they do is it it just drops spark to one cylinder at a time progressively until it limits the engine to whatever RPM that you set. But it'll fire it back up randomly so it doesn't load up with fuel and fell your spark plugs and things like that. Rather than cutting fuel and spark, which is where you get the radical backfiring and banging and the engine runs really rough. Um, this is just, just feels like it's a little bit better on the engine, but I don't have a ton of ton of experience to that so I can't really say too much I guess. Gotta get my wiring kit. We loaded everything on the trailer and I said we're probably gonna need all of this stuff and then sure enough we probably need all of this stuff. It took us a good 37 minutes to figure out how to use these connectors. Never seen such likes but I think we're slowly not making progress. White to brown sure. Red to black, that doesn't seem right, not doing that. I'm going red to red. So let me get one down here. There we go. And then, uh-oh. Somewhere there was another one. Where's my green? Maybe I don't use the green. No, well, I guess not. White, green, yellow, or brown, that doesn't make sense. Red to pink or red, maybe. Black to black, I guess I'm done. Which is fine, because then I can plug in the factory tack, which is over here. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna fire it up and see if I got tack, and we'll go from there. Then I'll feel comfortable. I'll show you what I got back here. This is supposed to be the right fix for my wheel spacing issue, but I'm almost positive that's not gonna work. So I did the right thing and just bought a bunch of washers. And I'm thinking two each, you know, stack these up on that lug. And that ought to give us the thickness we need to just kick the wheel out just enough to clear that caliper, hopefully. I'll start on this side because it's, you know, the wrench is right there. These are spacers. So it brings the wheel out farther. Hey, they fit. Oh, be dipped. I feel bad about what I said about that fella. I didn't mean it. So this should work just fine. Uh-oh. Gotta have the center cap. I'm not sure how much time we have left, but I know it's not a lot. Something sounds angrier than a Moschino in a mannequin store out there. I don't know what it is, but... These tires might just come flying off, which adds a little bit of excitement. I'm okay with that, actually. Yeah, you can see where I was scraping. Right there. Am I missing one? Oh, there it is. Now we're in business. So, I think that's it. We made it by the skin of our teeth. 
gonna put the air cleaner on, clean up a little bit, and she's ready to rock.
That's how you know it's running. It's fine. <laughs> I gave her all the eagles, man. All the eagles. Strap held in. Oh, lost the plug wire. He's good. Lost half your strap. I ran out of that. Thank you. I saw the engine starting to <laughs> starting to do that thing. So we just finished. I would have kept going, but we had a fire. I think twice, maybe three times. But I kept hearing all eight singing, so I figured it was just that oil or valve cover gasket, so I just stayed in it, but I better shut it down, stay safe. And then uh, gave her another onion on the way out, and she let on fire again. So here we sit, but we did it. Was in a field, abandoned earlier this week, got it running, supercharged it, came out to a vent, had a blast. I think we let all the eagles out of this thing. So we're gonna push it over the trailer, load her up, head back to Minnesota. Thanks guys for watching, we'll see you next time.